Hello, this is Matthew Williams bringing you a little tutorial on image stabilization, which is actually easier to use and free, better, better than After Effects even. Sorry, doggy. Um, so it's called D Shaker, and it's used with the free utility called Virtual Dub. Virtual Dub, just type it into Google, D Shaker, type it into Google. This is some analog footage which I shot years ago on a Hi8 camera, and as you can see, it jitters up and down because it was an analog ca camera, and every time it unpaused in order to do um, four frames of time lapse, it would unpause and then jitter the frame up. So sometimes it would do it, sometimes it wouldn't. So anyway, the way to get rid of this, have Virtual Dub installed, which download it first and you have to put it in a folder somewhere and this is the footage that I was going to use now I've had to save it as an AVI because that's all that um, virtual dub takes in really AVI and I've done it as uncompressed footage so it was actually 26 gigs in order for five minutes so this is a look at the um, AVI uh, program called virtual dub so you want to run virtualdub.exe and it's like a little mini editing tool, like a little mini Premiere. You can cut and paste things together. You can't really do many effects, but you can apply filters. And this is what uh, DShaker is. So DShaker VDF has to be in the folder, as you saw. Uh, so put that VDF DShaker file in the virtual dub folder, run virtual dub, and then you can see the virtual dub program. That's it. Okay, so we have to load up some footage first. So let's go to File, Open, as you can see you've got the file menus and the transport controls, the play and stop at the bottom. So let's open a piece of footage, so we have to go to my folder and load up the piece of footage which is uncompressed. So it's RGB uncompressed and you can see the footage there. And it's left hand window is the input, right hand window is the output. So because we haven't got any filters, the input is the same as the output. So now we apply a filter, we have to load a filter up, and as you can see, um, the filter isn't there yet because this is the first time we've done it. So it's not going to appear in the filter list. So we have to say load, and then we go to the same folder where virtual dub is. And when we go to that folder where virtual dub is, as you know, we've got the dshaker.vdf is in that folder. So we go to the virtual dub folder and there's dshaker vdf. So we load that up. So we say open it. Okay, so I'm probably going to do that in a second. So we say dshaker vdf. Uh, there we are, I'm zooming in so you can see it. dshaker vdf is the file we need. So we have to select that and click OK. OK, so let's do that. There we are, now you can see it in the list, D Shaker. So double click that D Shaker V3, which is the one that we want. Double click it and you get the uh, dialog screen comes up. And basically what we have is two things, pass one and pass two. Pass one, pass two, that's it. So pass one, we have to tell it what we're in. Are we in progressive format or are we in interlace format for whether or not we're progressive footage or interlace footage? If you don't know what that means, you need to find out. Uh, basically, then we do... Shush, doggy. Right, we do one pass um, as an anal analysis pass, which is pass one. So we, if we scroll forward a little bit... I had to start recording again because my dog went mental. Anyway, the left-hand foot, uh, footage is the input, and the right hand is the artificial intelligence um, analysis tool working its thing. So basically what you have to do, that's just me scrolling with a little bar down on the bottom left. So what you have to do now is make sure that the compression output mode is still uncompressed. Okay, and make sure your frame rate is still the original frame rate. So if you're at 25, it still has to be 25. If you're at 30, it has to be 30. Make sure you're in full processing mode. Full processing mode, very important. Now, to go through this analysis stage, we have to save the file, and we just call it pass one because it is the first pass. And then it will actually go through the whole of the file from beginning to end, and it'll do it in the, in the output mode on the right, which is the analysis mode. So, that's what we do. We say give it a name, pass one, and we run the file out in that mode, pass one, and it basically just analyzes the footage. Okay, then we go back up to the filters. Okay, double click the filter that we've got in there, and we bring the pass two online. 
So we say this is pass two, which is the actual processing mode. And instead of the analysis, it's the full processing. So we say pass two. And we go back to the save as file, and we just call it pass two. Um, you don't have to use those names, but that's just because it makes me remember which stage I'm at. So we call this one, um, you know, footage output or whatever. And this time you can see the one in the left hand is wiggling about, and the one in the right isn't. But then we run out of footage because I was only doing a test bit there and we only had a few seconds. We hadn't analyzed much more than a few seconds. So that's what you do. You create your pass two and then you can go and have a look at the footage, which is pass one or pass two. Pass one is obviously just the analysis stage. Pass two is the stabilized stage. And that's how you do it. So that's the unstabilized footage. You can see there now jumping up and down. OK, and then as it gets dark, we cut the footage to stabilized. Look at the difference that makes. Isn't it amazing? So that's the difference between stabilized and unstabilized. OK, then basically left to right, this is an analysis. So left hand is unstabilized, right hand side is stabilized. And you can see massive difference there in the jittering of the camera to no jittering. And this is zoomed in. You can see the difference there between left hand is unstabilized, zoomed in, right hand stabilized, almost rock solid. So brilliant difference. Now this is the footage. Um, I've edited the, uh, the, this is the stabilized footage. There we go. And then what I've done is because you can see there are cars and vans. What I've done is I've actually done the footage now um, without any cars and vans in it. So basically I've edited it so that there's uh, just just the stones and no lorries and no cars well you know no big ones anyway um so and i sped it up a little bit so there's a few cars and lorries at the beginning but then basically you should have nothing but the stones so i've just cropped it in a little bit zoomed in a bit to the footage and put a black bar at the bottom which is the offending bit where the cars were appearing and edited out bits that actually had the um big vehicles like uh, Land Rovers and vans and lorries. So there's the footage sped up. You can see the time lapse working and it doesn't jitter about too much now. It's still a little bit of jitter, but not as bad as it was. So that's the way to do stabilizing footage for time lapse.